welcome to our third lecture entitled Searches, Summons, Arrest and Rights or Safeguards for an Accused Person. This video is part one of a four-part series. We hope that the time spent paying attention will be beneficial to you. To properly situate or put into context the issue of the power of search or the power to search, let's watch a few videos on the Nigerian Customs Service and the Nigerian Police. There are four videos in all. Our first video is courtesy NTA News. NTA is short form for Nigerian Television Authority. It is a one minute, 35 second long video. It talks about the Nigerian Customs Service tracking 10 containers that have already left the ports on the grounds of the offense of false declaration of their contents. The video also shows Nigerian Customs Service officials breaking open containers, stealing the ports to inspect their contents. Here are some questions this lecture will attempt to answer. One, does the Nigerian Customs Service have the right to track items? Two, does the Nigerian Customs Service have the right to break into a place or thing and to search such a place or thing? Twenty-six containers were brought into the country through Apapa port on the false declaration. Ten of the containers already moved out of the port are still being tracked. The importer through customs license agent had brought in brand new car tires falsely declared as paperboard of machinery for steels. And as a beneficiary of fast track system of clearing goods, his consignments were cleared without delay, but he ended up abusing the privilege. The one is that they have lost their fast track facility. 
Secondly, he's going to be prosecuted, and automatically his license is, is, is he has lost his license. So, although the Controller General ruled out any connivance with his officers who only acted on a tip off, about 117 million naira will have been lost by this action of the importer and the clearing agent. Any time we identify false uh, declaration as, as, as the law specifies, is total is seizure. And like we, we, have, we have explained, this was uh, automatically seized. The Comptroller General who was on transit to Lagos advised other agents to ensure due diligence in their transaction, while the licensed custom agents has always been, been apprehended. Are you aware of what was contained in this container when you were doing the process? Sir, I wasn't aware because the bulletin was given to me. While other investigations continue, the Standard Organization of Nigeria has been invited to ascertain the quality of the tires. Shegun Lawale, NT News. Our second video is courtesy of TVC News. TVC News is a Nigerian 24-hour television news channel owned by Continental Broadcasting Service Nigeria Limited, now TVC Communications Limited, based in Lagos. It is a 2 minute 50 seconds long video. It contains complaints by car dealers against the Nigerian Customs Service for closing or selling their car marks. Here are some questions this lecture will attempt to answer. 1. Does the Nigerian Customs Service have the power to seal those lots? 2. Should the Nigerian Customs Service put the car dealers on notice in respect of their intention to seal those lots as a consequence of disputed duties on those imported vehicles?
The Nigeria Customs Service has been asked to rid the service of corrupt officers if it hopes to effectively battle vehicle smuggling and duty evasion. Car dealers issued this challenge in Lagos in view of the continued crackdown on car shops by customs operatives. TVC News, Ifunaya is the reports. The clamp down on car sales outlets has entered the second week. The Nigeria Customs Service had alleged that there were smuggled cars in sales outlets across the country. But the owners of these seed premises are saying that the action has become recurring. This year alone, they've come like three times. And each time they come, they will, um, they will just bounce on us. Sometimes they just tell us, lock your doors and pull the seals. We've been doing that back and forth. We take papers to them, they will check it. They will tell us to bring SYZ amount. That was before now. But now this is the last straw. They are insisting that officers of the Nigeria Customs Service are more culpable than others in the line of accusation regarding vehicle duty evasion and smuggling. We pay according to valuation given to us. And you people release this car with a zip note and the name of the custom person that released the car is on the paper. They should try and sanitize their office, not us. We are not a clearing agent. We are not customs. We are only importers and sellers of cars. Can those ones who are into this fraudulent act, before they give valuation, they will collect 200,000 per container, they will collect 200,000 per car. At the gate, they will collect 200,000, they will collect 200,000 per each car. And even if the person, the person, somebody that will move a file from one table to another, they collect money from this agent. At the end of the day, after what I paid 1.5 or 1.3 for a vehicle, on our papers will be seen 600,000. And they will tell you how they spread it. If you say that this is a lie, you people can send an undercover agent or let custom do that by themselves. They are threatening legal action to enforce what they see as constant intimidation. We are trying to get a lawyer to write them officially to come and open our shop. They have no legal right to sell our shop. Even if anything want to have, they should write us. They should write on our, on our organization. We are, we are citizens. We pay our, our normal dues. I don't know why they should sell up. TVC findings revealed that the management of the Nigeria Customs Service has set up a revenue recovery committee with a mandate to issue demand notice to effect payment for cars without proper duty documents, while those vehicles under detention are to pay 25% penalty after payment of duty. Ifunanya Eze, TVC News, Lagos. Our third video is courtesy of TVC 360 Nigeria. TVC 360 Nigeria is Nigeria's first exclusive online television news channel based in Lagos. It is a 3 minute 41 second long video. It contains the hues and cries of automobile dealers against the Nigerian Customs Service for what they describe as the indiscriminate closure of their shops without any prior notice or warning. Things got so heated that the automobile dealers decided to go on protest. In one of the speeches made by a representative of the automobile dealers, the reason given by the Nigerian Customs Service for the closure of the shops is revenue drive to recover unpaid duties or smuggle vehicles. In another speech made by another representative of the automobile dealers, they raised the issue that the Nigerian Customs Service struck without providing any prior notice and that neither did it obtain a court injunction to back its actions. Here are some questions this lecture will attempt to answer. One, does the Nigerian Customs Service have the power to close down a business premises? Two, is it a legal requirement to serve a notice on an establishment before searching it or selling it? Three, is it a legal requirement to obtain a court injunction?
Automobile dealers in Lagos State have raised alarm over the indiscriminate closure of their shops by the Nigerian Customs Service without prior notice. At a protest staged in Lagos, the car dealers accused the Nigerian Customs Service of corruption and illegal transactions. This followed allegations from the Customs Service that car dealers harbored smuggled vehicles in their shops without due permission. Adeshewa Udushoga reports. <laughs> Chanting solidarity songs, carrying placards bearing different inscriptions, the Lagos State automobile dealers are expressing their grievances over the indiscriminate closure of their businesses by officials of the Nigerian Customs Service over alleged car smuggling. The car dealers are also accusing the Nigerian Customs Service of corrupt practices after paying series of fines and duties not recepted or accounted for. And so we must state here with every sense of responsibility and patriotism that the action of Nigerian custom officers in this regard is clearly a demonstration of gross irresponsibility and unprecedented impunity and an abuse of power. Well, we are not informed or explained to for this illegal signing up. We just woke up a, a month ago on 13th of September to discover the sealing up of our car lots. We demanded for explanation and none was forthcoming. It was later we heard that the agency we are looking for small good cars, which they claimed are in our shops. However, we denied this allegation because almost all our members import cars through the ports and no car or truck we pass through the ports without custom clearing procedures. This is plus one month they locked us without court injunction, without a prior notice. I'm afraid of this country. Personally, I am afraid of this country. The people registering vehicles for us, the licensing officers are suffering. From us down to the people that wash cars for us, we are suffering. We can no more pay bills. We cannot pay salaries. Someone, somewhere, is shortchanging the government. And we are not aware of any short payment from this agency. So if you come around to tell us that we are short paid, then the original signee, that is the custom officer that signed for the release of the vehicle, at both the entry point and the exit should be questioned. If you have not, then why are you harassing innocent dealers for God's sake? The association is asking for the compensation of a sum of 10 billion naira for loss of businesses within the period of 30 days. They have also charged the customs service to seal their business premises across the state, giving an ultimatum of 14 days. Adesha Wadushoga, TV360 Lagos, Nigeria. Stock market. Our first video is courtesy of CGTN America. CGTN is short form for China Global Television Network. CGTN is a collection of international language news channels run by China Media Group. It is a one minute, 32 second long video. It contains the account of the captivity of a few hundred boys and men in a building that also happens to house an Islamic school. During the police raid, a total of seven people suspected to be teachers in that school were arrested. In order to rescue those boys and men, the police had to break into the premises. They also had to search the entire building one room at a time until every one of those captives were taken out. Here are some questions this lecture will attempt to answer. One, does the Nigerian police have the power to break into your premises? Two, does the Nigerian police have the power to search your premises they have broken into?
It's not clear how long they've been held captive here in Nigeria's Kaduna city. There are hundreds. Some are men, but most are boys, aged from around five to their late teens. According to local media reports, they've been tortured, starved, and sexually abused. The sores on one boy's back appears consistent with injuries inflicted by a whip. And the children gathered here are from all over the country, across all over the country. They were here, some of them were even chained. They were used, dehumanized. You can see it yourself. The rescued children have been moved to a temporary camp at a stadium in Kaduna. Some parents have already retrieved their children, but attempts to find them all are still underway. The police report that the building where the captives were found houses an Islamic school. Seven people thought to be teachers were arrested in a raid on Thursday. This place is neither a rehab or an Islamic school because you can see it with yourself. Small children, some of them are brought from our neighboring countries, Burkina Faso, Mali, Ghana and the rest. Islamic schools, known as al Majiris, are common across the largely Muslim north. There have been numerous reports by the Nigerian media that the government plans to ban the schools. For years, these institutions have been dogged by allegations of abuse. There are even accusations that some children have been forced to beg on the streets. Daniela Pearson, CGTN. Our final example is the customs raid and or siege of Fraser Suites Abuja, an upmarket hotel in Nigeria's federal capital territory. This hotel was a winner of 2017 World Luxury Hotel Awards, rated among the top three hotels in Abuja on TripAdvisor, has the largest rooms in the city, equipped with modern facilities and is a very ideal setting for a family getaway or a business meeting. Well, on Wednesday night, October the 2nd of 2019, as reported by The Punch, guests and staff members of Fraser Suites, Central Business District of Uja, were thrown into confusion when men of the Nigerian Customs Service embarked on a raid of the hotel. Three customs patrol vehicles marked Zone B, Federal Operation Unit, and Strike Force Unit blocked the entrance to the hotel. Over 12 heavily armed operatives impounded 11 vehicles, including a black Toyota Prado SUV with registration number RSH 500R, a Mercedes Benz MPV with registration number GWA665RZ, a Lexus MPV with registration number EKY650FA, a Mercedes Benz E Class Salon with registration number ABC592TM, and a Toyota Prado with registration number ABJ704CH. Top management of the hotel 
made in treaties to the gun touching custom operatives to move away from the gates, which appears not to have been heeded since they claim to be acting under the instruction of the controller of the unit. A custom officer who volunteered a reason for their action under the cloak of anonymity said they had received a tip off from an informant that hotels had become the new warehouse for vehicles without duty. Not only did they raid car mats, they also raided hotels, state liaison offices. According to the source, the Nigerian Customs Service gave the hotel management notice about the operation. He continued that they had tracked down four luxury cars to the hotel premises and the owners were asked to provide the original papers showing that the necessary duties were paid on the cars. Another source gave the time of the raid as around 8 p.m. He also indicated that it was a mixture of uniformed and plain clothes custom officials in three Hilux trucks that carried out the raid, that they took the registration number of some 12 cars including Mercedes-Benz S and C series, an Audi A8 sedan, and a few Lexus 570 MPVs. Those officers waited in the hotel till Thursday morning and even prevented a gray colored Lexus LX 570 MPV driven by Chief Wale Olanike Kun's driver from conveying him to court that morning causing him to suffer the indignity of leaving the hotel that morning for his business in a less endowed vehicle. Here are some questions the news story just retold raises, which this lecture will attempt to answer. One, does the Nigerian Customs Service have the right to raid or lay siege to any property? Two, does the Nigerian Customs Service have the right to block the entrance to a property? Three, does the Nigerian Customs Service have the right to impound vehicles? Four, is there any property that is off limits to the Nigerian Customs Service? Five, in the exercise of their function under the law, can they deprive the owner of a thing or the user of a thing from the enjoyment of such a thing? This is a four-part lecture. This first part treats the power of search or the power to search. On the screen, you can see the seven key broad subtopics on the search. The second part will deal with the power to summon or the power of summons. On the screen, you can see the six key broad subtopics on the summons. The third part will deal with the power to arrest or the power of arrest while the fourth and final part will address the rights and safeguards for an accused person. On the screen, you can see the three key broad subtopics under arrest, as well as the five key broad subtopics under rights and safeguards for an accused person. Let's take the first part of this lecture. The power of search, the power to search, or simply searches for shots. Let's consider three definitions. First, Nolus Plain English Dictionary. In criminal law, to examine another's premises, including a vehicle, 
or a person to look for evidence of criminal activity. Second, find law legal dictionary and exploratory investigation as of an area or person by a government agent that intrudes on an individual's reasonable expectation of privacy and is conducted usually for the purpose of finding evidence of unlawful activity or guilt or to locate a person. State v. Mahon, a 1985 American case. Third, the law.com law dictionary's definition. In criminal law, search is an examination of a man's house, premises, or person for the purpose of discovering proof of his guilt in relation to some crime or misdemeanor of which he is accused. Searches involve one, an examination of a person, things, or premises with a view to discovering contraband, illicit, or stolen property. Two, an examination of a person, things, or premises in search of some evidence of guilt to be used in the prosecution of a criminal action. Not all crimes require search. Searches may be conducted with or without a warrant. It is not wrong to conclude that the warrant of arrest is an implied authority to search the person whom it authorizes to be arrested. Searches are a key component of pretrial investigations. By the way, pretrial investigations is a topic we will be revisiting in the future. We are now done with our treatment of the definition of the term search. Let's take the second part of this lecture. Power of search in criminal proceedings. Power does not exist in a vacuum. Power depends on a legal instrument to be properly exercisable. Let's consider some provisions of Nigerian law that grant officials of the state power of search in criminal proceedings. But just before doing that, recall that in lesson two entitled jurisdiction and venue of courts of criminal jurisdiction, we defined jurisdiction and in lesson two entitled introduction to criminal litigation, we treated sources of the law or rules guiding Nigerian criminal litigation and elaborated on the rules or applicability of the one administration of criminal justice act ACJ in 2015. Two, Administration of Criminal Justice Law, ACJL 2011. Three, Criminal Procedure Act, CPA. Four, Criminal Procedure Code, CPC. If you didn't fully grasp the principles discussed therein, it would be appropriate to review them before going forward. I will provide links to those lessons in the video description. This is the reason why power of search cannot be treated without a consideration of applicable statutory provisions. Hence the list of statutes on the screen that will now be considered one after the other. Power of search in criminal proceedings under the ACJA. Two parties can exercise this power. One, a police officer. Two, a private person. Please see section nine, ACJA 2015. Power of search in criminal proceedings under the ACJL, Lagos. 
Two parties can exercise this power. One, a police officer. Two, a private person. Please see section 5, ACJL 2011. Power of search in criminal proceedings under the CPE. Two parties can exercise this power. One, a police officer. Two, a private person. Please see section 6, subsection 1, CPE. Power of search in criminal proceedings under the CPC. This law is ambiguous and convoluted. It uses expressions such as the person carrying out the search, the person making the search, the search shall be made by another woman, anyone who is authorized to arrest any person, section 34, subsection 1. Under the ACJA, the ACJL, and the CPA, the CPC fails to expressly state whom it has entrusted with the power of search. Specifically, Section 74 uses the expression authorizing the person to whom it is addressed instead of police officer as its counterparts have done. The above notwithstanding, a combined reading of section 74 and section 75 indicates that the expression as used in that context includes police officers. That conclusion is confirmed by section 76, which specifically mentions police officers in connection with the execution of search warrants. See also section 127, subsection 1, which specifically mentions police officer and medical officer in respect of a medical examination, which is a form of search. For an overview of search in the CPC, please go through section 34, 74 to 86, and specifically section 34, subsection 1, 81, 82, 78, and 79 in that order. It is subject to debate though if it includes private persons. Power of search in criminal proceedings under the Evidence Act. Although the Evidence Act does not list individuals who have the power to conduct searches during criminal proceedings, it does have provisions on improperly obtained evidence in Section 14 and matters the court shall take into account under Section 14 in Section 15. In other words, Section 14 and Section 15 of the Evidence Act 2011 has an impact on searches to the effect that the person who initiates the process with an improper motive may run afoul of the law and this may attract retribution from the court. This brings us to the end of power of search in criminal proceedings generally. Let's take a look at the third part of this lecture. Types of search. Our laws recognize three types. One, search of person. Two, search of premises. Three, search of things.
This brings us to the end of the third part of this lecture and the beginning of the fourth part of the lecture. We will be elaborating on the three types of search, beginning with search of persons. We will address this topic with the help of the following subheadings. First, provisions applying to all of Nigeria that is common to administration of criminal justice acts, administration of criminal justice law, criminal procedure acts, and criminal procedure code jurisdictions. Second, provisions applying to just ACJA jurisdiction. Third, provisions applying to just ACJL jurisdiction. Fourth, provisions applying to just CPA jurisdiction. Fifth, provisions applying to just CPC jurisdiction. Search of persons provisions applying to all of Nigeria. Section 4 Police Act gives the police powers of crime detection and prevention and the enforcement of all laws and regulations, while Section 4 Police Act confers general powers. Section 29 Police Act confers specific powers in relation to search, permitting them to detain and search a person whom he reasonably suspects of being involved or connected to crime. Section 29 Police Acts provides as follows. A police officer may detain any person, search any person, whom he reasonably suspects of having in possession or conveying in any manner anything which he has reason to believe to have been stolen or otherwise unlawfully obtained. The power of search is limited to utility for the recovery of items related to crime. The power of search must be exercised reasonably. The standard for measuring whether a search was reasonable in the circumstances is objective. In other words, the police power of search is not absolute. It is founded on reasonable suspicion. This begs the question, what is reasonable suspicion? To answer that, let's distinguish between the subjective standard and the objective standard. The subjective standard is opinionated. It is dependent on personal perspective or feelings. The subjective standard requires the prosecutor to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the accused intended his actions. Put another way, the subjective standard lays a lot of emphasis on the individual's mindset. The objective standard means the total elimination of any subjective perspective or feelings and a total dependence on the hard facts. The objective standard requires the prosecutor to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a reasonable person would have not acted as the accused did in the circumstances of the case. Put another way, the objective standard lays zero emphasis on the individual's mindset. From the standpoint of the police officer, the trier of the case would ask, would someone else in the shoes of the police officer have conducted the search? The authority for this position is Commission of Police versus Obolo in 1989 Nigerian case, Jackson versus Omoro Kuna in 1981 Nigerian case. From the standpoint of the person searched, the trial of the case would ask, did the person searched sufficiently identify himself to the police officer? 
Were the answers to the questions posed by the police officer satisfactory? Was the person searched found in suspicious circumstances? Search of persons provisions applying to all of Nigeria. Section 36, subsection 1, subsection C, ICPC Act. Whenever it appears to the chairman upon information and after such inquiry as he shall think necessary that there is reasonable cause to suspect that in any place there is an evidence of the commission of any offense under this act, he may, by written order, direct an officer of the commission to obtain a court order to search any person who is in or such premises and for the purpose of such search, detain such person and remove him to such place as may be necessary to facilitate such search and seize and detain any article found on such person. Section 36, subsection 2, subsection C, ICPC Act. Whenever it is necessary to do so, an officer of the commission exercising any power under subsection 1 shall obtain a warrant from a judge or magistrate to detain any person found in or on any premises or in any conveyance searched under subsection 1 or until such premises or conveyance has been searched. Section 36, subsection 3, ICPC Act. No person shall be searched under this section or under section 35 except by a person who is of the same gender as the person to be searched. Search of persons provisions applying to all of Nigeria. Section 150, Customs and Excise Management Act. Subsection 1. Where there are reasonable grounds to suspect that any person to whom this section applies is carrying any article which is chargeable with any duty which has not been paid or secured or the importation or exportation of which is prohibited any officer or person acting under the direction of an officer may search him and any article he has with him, provided that the person to be searched may require to be taken before a magistrate or officer appointed by the board for the purpose of this paragraph, who shall consider the grounds for suspicion and direct accordingly whether or not the search is to take place. No female shall be searched in pursuance of this section except by a female. Subsection 2. No officer or person acting under the direction of an officer in pursuance of this section shall be liable to any prosecution or action at law on account of any search made in accordance with the provisions of this section. Subsection 3. This section applies to any person who is on board or has landed from any ship or aircraft, any person entering or about to leave Nigeria, any person within the wharf area of a customs port, any person at a customs airport, any person within a customs area, any person traveling from or to any place which is on or beyond the frontier, any person who the officer may suspect has received any goods from any such person.
set of persons provisions applying to the administration of criminal justice acts jurisdiction. The highlights of this law include items to be seized should not include clothing. Only a person of the same sex can conduct search on the body of another. Although the act is neutral, it says only a woman can search another woman. Section 9, subsection 3. Someone of the opposite sex may search the things owned by a person of the opposite sex. Section 9, subsection 4. Exceptions to the rule on same-sex searches include 1. Urgency. 2. The interest of the due administration of justice. This is an innovation unique to the ACJA. Section 9, subsection 3. According to section 9, subsection 1, only a police officer can search, but a careful reading of section 9, subsection 4 indicates that a private person can also search. Also, section 149, subsection 3, seems to provide grounds for a private person accompanying a police officer armed with a search warrant to lawfully conduct a search. The use of reasonable force to conduct a search is laid out. Section 9, subsection 1. The grounds for conducting a search is reasonable suspicion. Section 9, subsection 1. It uses the expression suspect. Search may include medical examination if the police officer reasonably suspects there is a nexus between the alleged offense and the offender. In such a case, reasonable force is permissible to procure the medical examination. Section 11, Federal Republic of Nigeria versus Baba Sue. In the absence of a qualified medical practitioner, the law recognizes any other certified professional with relevant skills performing the medical examination. This is an innovation unique to the ECJA. Section 11 allows for inventorizing items of the arrested suspect following the conduct of searches on him and before the case heads to court. Section 10, subsection 1. Authentication of list of seizures with signature of the police officer and the arrested suspect. Section 10, subsection 2. It is immaterial that the arrested suspect refuses to sign. Section 10, subsection 2. Allows for handing over inventory to the legal practitioner of the accused or any other person of his choice. Section 10, subsection 3. If third party rights are affected by the seizure, permits the release on bond pending arraignment of suspects. Section 10, subsection 4 recognizes that the police officer has a discretion not to release detained items to third parties interested in the same, but that in such a case, the court should be informed. Section 10, subsection 5. Courts can decide to order the release of the detained items. Section 10, subsection 6. Authorizes the release of detained property if 1. The investigation is inconclusive. Two, the property is not connected to or a proceed of crime. Innovation of the ACJA, section 10, subsection 7.
such a person's provisions applying to the administration of criminal justice law jurisdiction. Highlights. Items to be seized do not include clothing. Only a person of the same sex can conduct searches on the body of another. By implication, a man can search a man and a woman can search a woman. Section 5, subsection 2. Someone of the opposite sex may search the things owned by a person of the opposite sex. Section 5, subsection 3. The use of reasonable force to conduct a search is legal. Section 5, subsection 1. There must be reasonable suspicion before initiating a search. Section 5, subsection 1. Section 5, subsection 6. Uses the expression person or arrested person or person arrested. Search may include medical examination if the police officer has reasonable suspicion that there is a nexus between the alleged offence and the offender and permits reasonable force to procure the medical examination. Section 5, subsection 6. Federal Republic of Nigeria versus Baba Sue. In the absence of a medical practitioner, the police or anyone else acting in good faith in aid or as a medical practitioner or police officer may conduct the medical examination. Section 5, subsection 7. According to Section 5, subsection 1, only a police officer can search. But a careful reading of Section 5, subsection 3, and also Section 5, subsection 7, a private person can also conduct a search of a person. Also, Section 109, subsection 3, seems to provide grounds for a private person accompanying a police officer armed with a search warrant to lawfully conduct a search. If the arrested person is charged, the police is obligated to share with the court an inventory of items seized from him. Then it shall be up to the court to decide to return the same in whole or in part to the person so charged or a person he wants them returned to. Section 5, subsection 4. If the arrested person is not charged because the investigations are inconclusive, then the police are obligated to release the property to him. Section 5, subsection 5. The police officer should inventorize the items of the person arrested upon his arrest and even before the case heads to court. He should also authenticate the list with his signature. Section 6, subsection A. The police officer should hand over a copy of the signed inventory to his legal practitioner or other person of his choice. Section 6, subsection D. Search of persons provisions applying to the Criminal Procedure Act jurisdiction. Highlights. Clothing is the only exception to seizure of items from arrested person. Section 6, subsection 1. Only a woman can conduct search on the body of another woman. Can a woman search a man then? Section 6, subsection 2. Someone of the opposite sex may search a woman's handbags, briefcases, wallet, etc. Section 6. Subsection 3. According to Section 6, Subsection 1, only a police officer can search, but a careful reading of Section 6, Subsection 3 indicates that a private person can also search. Also, Section 112, Subsection 3 seems to provide grounds for a private person accompanying a police officer armed with a warrant to lawfully conduct a search. The use of reasonable force to conduct a search is legal. Section 6, subsection 1. 
The grounds for conducting a search is reasonable suspicion. Section 6, subsection 1. It uses the expression person. Search may include medical examination if the police officer has reasonable suspicion that there is a nexus between the alleged offense and the offender. In such a case, reasonable force is permissible to procure the medical examination. Section 6, Federal Republic of Nigeria versus Baba Sewer. If a person is charged, the police is obligated to share with the court an inventory of the item seized from him. Then it shall be up to the court to decide to return the same in whole or in part to the person so charged or to the person he wants them returned to. Section 6, subsection 4. If the investigation is inconclusive or exonerates the arrested person, then release the property to him. Section 6, subsection 5. Search of persons' provisions applying to the Criminal Procedure Code jurisdiction. Highlights. Only a woman can search the body of a woman. Section 82. A woman should search a fellow woman decently. Section 82. Private person search is allowed. Section 81. The grounds for conducting a search is reasonable suspicion. Section 81, subsection 1. Search may include medical examination if a justice of the peace, this is an innovation of CPC, or a police officer reasonably suspects that there is a nexus between the alleged offense and the offender, provided that the offense is punishable with a term of imprisonment an innovation from the CPC, and the interest of justice so dictates, innovation from the CPC. Then, a medical examination may be procured from a medical doctor, and in his absence, a dispensary attendant, innovation from the CPC. Section 127, subsection 1 and 2. Section 44, subsection 1. A police officer that is making an arrest, receiving an arrested person from a person from whom the arrest was made, may search the arrested person or cause him to be searched. Section 42, subsection 2. A police officer searching a person shall place in safe custody such articles except the clothes on the person arrested as he deems fit. Make a list of the same. Permit the arrested person to retain all articles not so placed in safe custody. Woman searches woman's body. Section 42, subsection 3, and section 82. But a man can search a woman's handbag. For power of search, by private person, see section 28, subsection D. This brings us to the end of our exhaustive consideration of the power of search or the power to search persons. The power of search of person or the power to search persons was the fourth part of this lecture. The power of search of premises or the power to search premises is the fifth part of this lecture. Search of premises. The general rule is that without a search warrant, any search of premises is unlawful. On the other hand, if there is a search warrant, then the search of such premises is lawful. 
Section 37, 1999 Constitution states that the privacy of citizens, their homes, correspondence, telephone conversations, and telegraphic communications is hereby guaranteed and protected. The second general rule is that the power of search of a place, premises, also includes the power to arrest a person or persons therein. The existence of a general rule begs the existence of exceptions, and the search of premises is no different. Exceptions to that general rule exist, including 1. The omnibus exception in section 45, subsection 1, 1999 Constitution, which states, Nothing in sections 37, 38, 39, 40, and 41 of this Constitution shall invalidate any law that is reasonably justifiable in a democratic society. A. In the interest of defense, public safety, public order, public morality, or public health. Or B. For the purpose of protecting the rights and freedom of other persons. Two. The specific exception in section 147, subsection 1, Customs and Excise Management Act, without prejudice to any other power conferred by this Act, where there are reasonable grounds to suspect that anything liable to forfeiture under the Customs and Excise Laws is kept or concealed in any building or place, any officer may without a warrant enter that building or place at any time whether by day or night and search for seize detain or remove any such thing and may so far as is reasonably necessary for the purpose of such entry search seizure detention or removal break open any door window or container and force and remove any other impediment or obstruction. Let's recall the questions we asked at the beginning of this lecture. Does the Nigerian Customs Service have the right to track items? Yes, they have the right to track items. Does the Nigerian Customs Service have the right to break into a place or thing and search such a place or thing? Yes, they try to fulfill the obligations placed on them by the Customs and Excise Management Act. Does the Nigerian Customs Service have the power to seal the lots of automotive car dealers? Yes, if they suspect that they are in contravention of the Customs and Excise Management Act. Should the Nigerian Customs Service put the car dealers on notice in respect of their intention to seal those lots as a consequence of disputed duties on those imported vehicles? It would be nice if a young customs service would, would do so. However, if you read the law, it uses the word may without a warrant. So it is not mandatory to put a suspected offender on notice. Does the Nigerian Customs Service have the power to close down a business premises? Yes, if such a premises is contravening the Customs and Excise Management Act. Is it a legal requirement to serve a notice on an establishment before searching or selling it? The law does not require the Customs Service to do that. Is it a legal requirement to obtain a court injunction? The law does not envisage the obtaining of a court injunction in advance of searching or sealing a property in contravention of the Customs and Excise Management Act. 
Does the Nigerian custom service have the right to raid or lay siege to any property? The law itself uses the expression any property or any place. So yes is the answer. Does the Nigerian custom service have the right to block the entrance to a property? If such blockage is in trying to fulfill the obligations placed on them by the Customs and Excise Management Act, then yes. Does the Nigerian Customs Service have the right to impound vehicles? Yes, they have the right to impound things that they suspect to have been in violation of the Act establishing them. Is there any property that is of limits to the Nigerian Customs Service? The answer is no, because the Act says any place. In the exercise of their functions under the law, can the Nigerian Customs Service deprive the owner of a thing or the user of a thing the enjoyment of such a thing? Yes, they can do so if they are trying to fulfill the functions imposed on them by the law. Three, the specific exception in section 41, subsection 1A and B, subsection I of the National Drug Law Enforcement Act. For the purpose of this act, any police officer or customs officer or any officer of the agency involved in the enforcement of the provisions of this act may, without warrant, enter and search any land, building, or carrier, including aircraft, vehicle, or container, or any other instrumentalities, whatsoever which he has reason to believe is connected with the commission of an offense under this act. Four. The specific exception in section 36, subsection 1A, ICPC Act. Whenever it appears to the chairman upon information and after such inquiry as he shall think necessary that there is reasonable cause to suspect that in any place there is an evidence of the commission of any offense under this Act, he may, by written order, direct an officer of the commission to obtain a court order to A. Enter any premises and then search for, seize, and take possession of any book, document, or other article evidencing the commission of such offense. Section 36, subsection 2. Whenever it is necessary to do so, an officer of the commission exercising any power under subsection 1 shall obtain a warrant from a judge or magistrate to a. Break open any outer or inner door or window of any premises and enter there too, or otherwise forcibly enter the premises and every part thereof. B. Remove by force any obstruction to such entry, search, seizure, or removal as he is empowered to effect. Or C. Detain any person found in or on any premises or in any conveyance searched under subsection 1 or until such premises or conveyance has been searched. Section 36, subsection 3. No person shall be searched under this section or under section 35 except by a person who is of the same gender as the person to be searched. Five, the specific exception in section 28, subsection 1 and 2 of the Police Act, which states as follows. A superior police officer may authorize any police officer to enter any house, shop, 
warehouse or other premises in search of stolen property. Search therein and seize and secure any property he may believe to have been stolen. Detain a person on the property as at the time of such seizure, or the person from whom it was taken is different from the person on whose premises it was, and summon or arrest such a person before a magistrate to account for his possession of such property, unless previously charged with receiving stolen property. But see also section 28, subsection 3, which indicates that such power is not broad, but limited, and can only be exercised by a superior police officer. If the premises to be searched is currently in the occupation of a person who has been convicted of receiving stolen property, or of harboring thieves, or any offense involving fraud or dishonesty, and punishable by imprisonment, or the premises to be searched has been in the occupation of a person with, who within the preceding 12 months has been convicted of receiving stolen property or of harboring thieves or any offense involving fraud or dishonesty and punishable by imprisonment. Also see section 2, which defines the superior police officer to mean any police officer above the rank of a cadet assistant superintendent of police. Other acts containing similar provisions include NAFTA Act, EFCC Act, Money Laundering Act, Terrorism Act, Federal Inland Revenue Act. All these acts contain provisions delegating powers to government officials to search without warrants. Search of premises provisions applying to the Administration of Criminal Justice Act jurisdiction. Section 12, subsection 1. Where a person or police officer acting under a warrant of arrest or otherwise having authority to arrest has reason to believe that the suspect to be arrested has entered into or is within any house or place, the person residing in or being in charge of the house or place shall on demand by the police officer or person acting for the police officer allow him free access to the house or place and afford all reasonable facilities to search the house or place for the suspect sought to be arrested. Section 12, subsection 2. Where access to a house or place cannot be obtained under subsection 1 of this section, the person or police officer may enter the house or place and search it for the suspect to be arrested. And in order to effect an entrance into the house or place, may break open any outer or inner door or window of any house or place, whether that of the suspect to be arrested or of any other person, or otherwise effect entry into such house or place. If after notification of his authority and purpose and demand of admittance duly made, he cannot obtain admittance. Section 12, subsection 3. Where the suspect to be arrested enters a house or place in the actual occupancy of another person, being a woman who by custom or religious practice does not appear in public, the person making the arrest shall, before entering the house or place, give notice to the woman that she is at liberty to withdraw and afford her every reasonable opportunity and facility for withdrawing, and may then enter the house or place, but the notice shall not be necessary where the person making the arrest is a woman. Section 152 states, a magistrate or justice of the peace 
may the rape is sexually conducted in his presence or any place for the sake of which he is competent to issue a search warrant. Section 152 deals with the power of a magistrate or a justice of the peace to direct the search of any place in his presence that he is authorized to issue a search warrant. Search of premises provisions applying to the administration of criminal justice law jurisdiction. Section 7, subsection 1, deals with the power of search of a place entered by a person the police is attempting to arrest. That subsection actually provides for two possibilities. One, acting under a warrant of arrest. Two, otherwise having authority to arrest. Search of premises provisions applying to the Criminal Procedure Act jurisdiction. Section 7, subsection 1, deals with the power of search of a place entered by a person the police are seeking to arrest. That subsection actually provides for two possibilities. One, acting under a warrant of arrest. Two, otherwise having authority to arrest. Search of premises provisions applying to the Criminal Procedure Code jurisdiction. Section 34, subsection 1 states If anyone who is authorized to arrest any person has reason to believe that such person has entered into or is within any place, he may enter such place and there search for the person to be arrested. Section 34, subsection 2 states the person residing in or being in charge of such place shall on demand allow free ingress thereto and afford all reasonable facilities for search. Section 34 deals with the power of search of a place entered by a person the police is attempting to arrest. Section 77, subsection 2 states, upon, upon complaints made on oath to a court of the abduction for any unlawful purpose or of the unlawful detention of any person, the court may, after such inquiry, if any, as it thinks necessary, make an order for the production of that person or for the immediate restoration to his parent, guardian, or other person having lawful charge of him, and may compel compliance with an order made under this subsection, using such force as may be necessary, and upon the production of the person who is the subject of the order, the court shall make such order as seems proper. Section 77, subsection 2, deals with the power of search for a person wrongly confined within a premises. By virtue of section 78, the CPC allows for the presence of two adult citizens during search by the owner of the premises. This is not a mandatory requirement, but a desirable option at the discretion of the one whose premises is being searched. Section 85 CPC states, any justice of the peace may direct a search to be made in his presence of any place for the search of which he is competent to issue a search warrant. Section 85 deals with the power of a justice of the peace so direct the search of any place in his presence that he is authorized to issue a search 
warrant. In summary, the following conditions support search of premises. One, a police officer acting under a warrant of arrest under ACJA, ACJL, and CPA. Two, anyone who is authorized to arrest any person under the CPC. Three, a justice of the peace or magistrate under the ACJA and CPC. Four, a number of federal legislation such as section 147, subsection 1, CIMA, section 41, NDLEA Act, section 36, subsection 1, ICPC Act, etc. Five, the omnibus exception in section 45, subsection 1, 1991 Constitution. Recall the questions we asked on the power of the police. Does the Nigerian police have the power to break into a premises? Yes, the Nigerian police has the power to break into a premises. But the police act only gives them that power in relation to stolen items or acts of dishonesty. It is the ACJA the ACJL, the CPA, and the CPC that give them that power generally. Does the Nigerian police have the power to search a premises they have broken into? Yes, they do under the ACJA, the ACJL, the CPA, and the CPC. We have now come to the end of the fifth part of this lecture and the beginning of part six, which is search of things. The power of search of things may be exercised with or without a search warrant. A number of federal statutes allow members of law enforcement and even intelligence agencies to exercise this power. They include that armed limited to section 29 police acts, section 147, subsection 1, customs and excise management act, section 41, national drug law enforcement act, section 36, ICPC act. Thing here includes cars, motorcycles, goods, food, luggage, items of clothing, parcels. Search of things provisions applying to all of Nigeria. All the aforementioned status and all federal legislations with provisions delegating power of search to law enforcement or intelligence agencies contain provisions on search of things. On the search of premises, we reviewed the omnibus exception in section 45, subsection 1, 1999 constitution. Section 147, subsection 1, SEMA, contains the expression any officer may, without a warrant, enter that building or place at any time, whether by day or night, and search for, seize, detain, or remove such thing. Section 8, subsection 1B, NDLEA Act, states that one of the duties of the General and Assets Investigation Unit of the NDLEA shall be working collaboration with the Nigerian Customs Services in monitoring the movement of goods and persons in any customs area, customs stations, custom ports, or customs airports, and searching cargoes and incoming and outgoing vessels, including 
pleasure crafts and fishing vessels, as well as aircrafts and vehicles, and when appropriate, searching crew members, passengers, and their baggages. Section 8, subsection 1E continues. Investigating assets and properties of persons arrested for committing any offense under this act. For the purpose of this act, any police officer or custom officer Section 41, subsection 1. For the purpose of this act, any police officer or customs officer or any officer of the agency involved in the enforcement of the provisions of this act may, without warrant, enter and search any land, building, or carrier, including aircraft, vehicle, or container, or any other instrumentalities whatsoever which he has reason to believe is connected with the commission of an offence under this act. Arrest any person whom he has reason to believe has committed an offence under this act. Seize any item or substance which he has reason to believe has been used in the commission of an offence under this act. Section 41, subsection 2. A written receipt of the agency shall be given for any item, substance, or thing seized under subsection 1 of this section. Search of things provisions applying to the Administration of Criminal Justice Act jurisdiction. Section 9, subsection 2A to B, ACJ 2015, makes it clear that a search of things on a suspect may be incidental to the arrest, and also that such a search of things on the suspect may be necessary to confirm or disprove the reasonable suspicion that he has in his possession. Section 9, subsection 2A, stolen articles. Section 9, subsection 2B, instruments of violence or poisonous substance. Section 9, subsection 2C, tools connected with the kind of offense which he is alleged to have committed. Or section 9, subsection 2D, other articles which may furnish evidence against him in regard to the offense which he is alleged to have committed. Section 10, subsection 1, provides that the police officer is duty bound to generate an inventory of property of the arrested suspect. Section 10, subsection 2, states that such an inventory should be signed by the police officer. Section 10, Subsection 3 states that a copy of such an inventory should be given to 1. The arrested suspect 2. His legal practitioner 3. Or any other person he directs it to be given. Search of things provisions applying to the administration of criminal justice law jurisdiction. Section 5, subsection 1 makes it clear that the search of things on a person arrested may be incidental to the arrest, and also that such a search of things on the person arrested may be necessary to confirm or disprove the reasonable suspicion that he has in his position. Section 5, subsection 1, stolen articles, instruments of violence or poisonous substance, or tools connected with the kind of offense which he is alleged to have committed, or other articles which may furnish evidence against him in regard to the offense which he is alleged to have committed. Section 6, subsection A, 
provides that the police officer is duty bound to generate an inventory of property seized from the arrested person. Also states that such an inventory should be signed by the police officer. Section 6, subsection B provides that a copy of such an inventory should be given to 1. The arrested suspect, 2. His legal representative, 3. Any other person he directs to be given. Set of paints provisions applying to the Criminal Procedure Act jurisdiction. Section 6, subsection 1a to b makes it clear that a set of things on a person arrested may be incidental to the arrest, and also that such a set of things on his person may be necessary to confirm or disprove the reasonable suspicion that he has in his possession. Stolen articles instruments of violence or poisonous substances, or tools connected with the kind of offense which he is alleged to have committed, or other articles which may furnish evidence against him in regard to the offense which he is alleged to have committed. No provision on inventory of the property of the arrested person. Section six, subsection four, is the closest to such an inventory, except that it is not for the arrested suspect, his legal practitioner, or other person of his choice, but for the court, provided that he is charged before such a court. Also, this provision hands over the power to release, release such property in whole or in part to the court. Section 6. Subsection 5 tells the police that they are duty bound to release seized items if the investigation is inconclusive or exonerates the arrested person. Search of things provisions apply to the Criminal Procedure Code jurisdiction. Section 26, subsection H, makes it clear that the search of a person may be incidental to his arrest upon suspicion of him holding stolen property. Section 26H states, any police officer may arrest any person in whose possession property is found which may reasonably be suspected to be stolen property or property in respect of which an offence has been committed under sections 115, 116, 118, 119, 120, 121, 168 or 169 of the penal code or who may reasonably be suspected of having committed an offence with reference to such property. Section 80 recognizes that a set of things may result in their seizure and while it does not use the term inventory, it uses the term a copy of the list of things seized therein and permits a third party receiving the same as evidence of their search and seizure. Section 81 subsection 1 mentions searching any person which is reasonably suspected of concealing about his person any article. The use of the word article is equivalent to the word thing, which means the CBC recognizes the power of search of things. Section 81, subsection 2, contains the expression a list of things found on his person and seized, as well as copy of the list. First, this is direct proof of the recognition of the power of search of things by the CPC, as well as its recognition of the importance of the rights of the arrested person to evidence of the search and seizure of his property.
This brings us to the end of part six, that is, search of things. This also means the beginning of part seven, that is, search without warrants. Search without warrants for persons. In ACJA, ACJL, CPA, and CPC jurisdictions, it is allowable to search persons without a warrant. The relevant sections are as follows. Section 9, subsection 1 for ACJA. Section 5, subsection 1 for ACJL. Section 6, subsection 1 for CPA. Section 81, subsection 1 for CPC. Also note that Section 29, Police Act, makes a search of a person without a warrant lawful in limited circumstances. Search without warrants for premises. As a general rule, this is illegal, but the law permits exceptions. For full details, please see the subheading Search of Premises. Search without warrants for things. The general rule is this, if it is incidental to the arrest, then it is legal. This brings us to the end of our consideration of part 7, search without warrants. It also means the beginning of a new part that is Part 8 entitled Search with Warrants. Search with Warrants. Introduction. Mainly utilized in relation to search of premises or things. For ACJA jurisdiction, See the following, section 144, subsection 1 and 2, section 149, subsection 1, 2, 5 and 6, section 153, subsection 1 and 2. For ACJL jurisdiction, see the following, section 104, subsection 1, A to C. Section 109, subsection 1 and 2. For CPA jurisdiction, see the following. Section 107, subsection 1, A to C. Section 112, subsection 1 and 2. For CPC's jurisdiction, see the following. Section 74, section 75, section 76. The CPC is the only legislation that contains provisions for the procurement of a search warrant to address the offense of false imprisonment or wrongful confinement. Section 77, subsection 1 and 2. A search warrant is basically an order issued by any of the following. A judge, a magistrate, the Justice of the Peace, a superior police officer. Such an order authorizes the police officer or anyone else named in it to search, seize any property immediately or remotely related to the commission of a crime and even arrest the occupier of the house or place where such seizures are made.
Using the 10 top topics currently shown on the screen, we will now take a deep dive into search with warrants. 1. Persons authorized by statute to issue a search warrant. 2. Requirements to be met by a person seeking to procure a search warrant. 3. Contents of a search warrant. 4. Time of issue of a search warrant. 5. Period of validity of a search warrant. 6. Validity of a search warrant contingent on its being signed by the issuing authority. 7. A single search warrant can empower more than one person to act. 8. Some notes on the execution of a search warrant. 9. Liability for wrongful procurement of a search warrant. 10. Admissibility of evidence obtained in the court of the unlawful execution of a search warrant. Authority to issue a search warrant in Nigeria as a whole. Our first source is the Police Act, Section 28, Subsection 1 and 2 of the Police Act states as follows. A superior police officer may authorize in writing any police officer to enter any house, shop, warehouse or other premises in search of stolen property. Search therein and seize and secure any property he may believe to have been stolen. Detain a person on the property as at the time of such seizure or the person from whom it was taken, if different from the person on whose premises it was, and summon or arrest such a person before a magistrate to account for his possession of such property, unless previously charged with receiving stolen property. But see also section 28, subsection 3, which indicates that such power is not broad, but limited and can only be exercised by a superior police officer if the premises to be searched is currently in the occupation of a person who has been convicted of receiving stolen property or of harboring thieves or any offense involving fraud or dishonesty and punishable by imprisonment or the premises to be searched has been in the occupation of a person who within the preceding 12 months has been convicted of receiving stolen property or of harboring thieves or any offense involving fraud or dishonesty and punishable by imprisonment. Also see section 2, which defines the superior police officer to mean any police officer above the rank of a cadet assistant superintendent of police. Authority to issue a search warrant, ACJA jurisdiction. Section 143 list the issuing authorities as a court, a justice of the peace. Section 146, subsection 1, indicates that the word court in relation to such warrants appears to be the judge himself, the magistrate himself, the justice of the peace himself. Authority to issue a search warrant, ACJL jurisdiction, section 164, subsection 1, states that the issuing authority must be a magistrate. Section 106, subsection 1, appears to make it clear that this is a personal task and not one he can delegate. Authority to issue a search warrant, CPA jurisdiction, section 107, subsection 1, states that the issuing authority 
must be a magistrate. Section 109, subsection 1, states that signing a search warrant is a personal task. It is not a task that a magistrate can delegate. Authority to issue a search warrant, CPC jurisdiction. Section 74 states that the issuing authorities are a court, a justice of the peace. Requirements to be met by persons seeking a search warrant. ACJA jurisdiction issued based on information on oath and information in writing. Section 144, subsection 1. ACJL jurisdiction issued based on information on oath and information in writing. Section 104, subsection 1. CPA jurisdiction issued based on information on oath and information in writing. Section 107, subsection 1. CPC jurisdiction, the legislation is silent. So by implication, this is not a requirement. Contents of a search warrant. Who it is issued to. Issuing authority. Place to be executed. What should be searched for? Time to be executed. Issue date. Signature. Issue place. Time of issue of a search warrant on any day, including weekends and public holidays. ACJA, Section 148. ACJL, Section 108, Subsection 1. CPA, Section 111, Subsection 1. CPC, silence on this. Period of validity of a search warrant. In nearly all of Nigeria, the rule is that it remains valid and in force until executed or cancelled. Please see section 146, subsection 2, ACJA. Section 106, subsection 2, ACJL. Section 109, subsection 2, CPA. Also note that the CPC is silent on this issue. Validity contingent on its being signed by the issuing authority. Section 146 ACJA. Section 106 ACJL. Section 109, subsection 1, CPA. CPC is silent on this. A single search warrant can empower more than one person to act. Section 147, ACJA. Section 107, ACJL, Section 110, CPA, CPC is silent on this. Execution of a search warrant. The precondition to the execution of a search warrant is its presentation to the person who resides in or manages the building, place, or thing to be searched. Section 149, subsection 1, ACJA. Section 109, subsection 1, ACJL. Section 112, subsection 1, CPA. 
Section 34, Subsection 2, CPC. Section 78, CPC. Inventory of property of suspects. The person authorized to execute the search warrant is duty bound to generate an inventory of seizures from the person of the suspects. The inventory of seizures should be signed or sealed by the following. The person to whom the search warrant is addressed, the person executing the search warrant, the witnesses. A witnessed copy of the inventory of seizures must be given to the person searched. Section 149, subsection 5. This is an innovation of the ACJA. In ACJL jurisdiction, the legislation is totally silent on the duty to inventorize seizures taken from the person of the suspects. In CPA jurisdiction, just like the ACJL jurisdiction, the legislation is totally silent on the duty to inventorize seizures taken from the person of the suspects. In CPC jurisdiction, just like the ACJ jurisdiction, the legislation is totally silent on the duty to inventorize seizures taken from the suspects. Presence of witnesses during the execution of a search warrant. In ACJA jurisdiction, as a general rule, witnesses should observe a search conducted courtesy of a search warrant. As a general rule, at least two witnesses should observe the search. As a general rule, the person to whom the search warrant is addressed can provide his own witnesses. The only exception to the general rule is that if the facts of the case so dictate, then the court or justice of the peace may direct the search to be conducted in the absence of witnesses. Section 149, subsection 4. In ACJL jurisdiction, legislation is silent on this. In CPA jurisdiction, legislation is silent on this. In CPC jurisdiction, as a general rule, witnesses should observe a search conducted courtesy of a search warrant. The only exception to the general rule is that if the facts of the case so dictate, then the courts or justice of the peace may direct the search to be conducted in the absence of witnesses. Section 78, CPC. Signing and or sealing of inventory of seizures. In ACJA jurisdiction, this is the practice. Section 149, subsection 5. In ACJL jurisdiction, there is no provision for this. In CPA jurisdiction, there is no provision for this. In CPC jurisdiction, this is the practice. Section 78, Section 81, Subsection 2. Accommodation for the practice of screening women from men or strangers. In ACJA jurisdiction, yes, section 149, subsection 6. In ACJL jurisdiction, the law is silent on this. In CPA jurisdiction, the law is silent on this. In CPC jurisdiction, yes, section 79. CPC.
right to personally observe or observe indirectly through representatives the execution of a search warrant. In ACJA jurisdiction, yes, section 150. In ACJL jurisdiction, no. In CPA jurisdiction, no. In CPC jurisdiction, yes, section 80, CPC. Right to a witnessed copy of the inventory of seizures. In ACJA jurisdiction, yes, section 150. In ACJL jurisdiction, no. In CPA jurisdiction, no. In CPC jurisdiction, yes, section 80, CPC. Seizure of items responsive to the search warrant. In ACJA jurisdiction, yes. Section 144, subsection 2A. In ACJL jurisdiction, yes. Section 104, subsection 1I. In CPA jurisdiction, yes. Section 107, subsection 1C and I. In CPC jurisdiction, yes. Section 74, CPC. Section 76, subsection 1A. Duty to allow police officer access to locked premises. In ACJA jurisdiction, yes. Section 149, subsection 1. In ACJL jurisdiction, yes. Section 109, subsection 1. In CPA jurisdiction, yes. Section 112, subsection 1. In CPC jurisdiction, yes. Section 34, subsection 2. Police officer empowered to use reasonable force to access place or premises or thing if residence or manager uncooperative. In ACJA jurisdiction, yes. Section 149, subsection 2. In ACJL jurisdiction, yes. Section 109, subsection 2. In CPA jurisdiction, Section 112, subsection 2, and Section 7, subsection 2. In CPC jurisdiction, only Section 77, subsection 2, which deals with search for person wrongfully confined, specifically mention the use of necessary or reasonable force. Also, Section 34, subsection 3, but notes as per section 34, subsection 4, that the provisions of this section are subject to the provisions of section 79. Police officer empowered to break out of a house or place if denied free exit. In ACJA jurisdiction, yes, section 13. In ACJL jurisdiction, yes, section 8. In CPA jurisdiction, yes, section 8. In CPC jurisdiction, yes, section 36. Duty to authenticate outside of jurisdiction and proceed under the direction of a court that has jurisdiction. ACJA, Section 151. ACJL, silence. CPA, silence. CPC, Section 83. Time of execution of search warrants. 
Section 148, ACJA, Anytime, Any Day. Section 108, Subsection 2, ACJL, Between 5 a.m. and 8 p.m. Section 111, CPA, Between 5 a.m. and 8 p.m. CPC, Appears to be silent on this. Liability for wrongful procurement of a search warrant. If a complainant acted in good faith, then the search warrant may be said to have been procured correctly. If a complainant acted in bad faith or malice, then the search warrant may be said to have been wrongfully procured. This is because Section 37, 1999 Constitution guarantees privacy of Nigeria's citizens and residents, while Section 45, Subsection 1, 1999 Constitution provides the exceptions to the general rule on the guarantee of such privacy. An illegal procurement or execution of a search warrant does not fall within the exceptions and as a consequence, the complainant who made the bad faith report will be liable to the alleged offender in thoughts. The authority for this is Adefumilaya v. Odutan, a 1958 case. Such a complainant may incur liability for damages from the malicious procurement of a search warrant. If the alleged offender suffered illegal arrest and detention, then liability for false imprisonment would follow. According to Garba v. Maiguru, a 1992 case, the test is objective. What did the defendant know at the time of the complaint? Did the facts as known to the defendant at that time disclose reasonable and probable cause to conduct a search on the plaintiff's property or to arrest? Yet, another consideration in establishing the guilt or others of the defendant is the answer to the question, did the defendant set the law in motion against the plaintiff or not? If yes, then he is guilty. Balogun v. Amubi Kaho, a 1989 case. In Adefu Milaya v. Odutan, a 1958 case, the defendant made up a case of theft against the plaintiff. In the course of their pre-trial investigations, the plaintiff was arrested and detained briefly. Since the investigations failed to conclude that the plaintiff committed the theft directly or indirectly, the plaintiff then proceeded against the defendant in an action claiming damages for false imprisonment and succeeded since the court held that even the police investigations could not substantiate the allegations. While in Balogun v. Amubi Kaho, a 1983 case, which was actually a land dispute, the appellant made a false accusation that the respondent sent a woman to eliminate him. In the course of their pre-trial investigations, the woman was arrested. The arrested woman claimed in a statement to the police that the respondent indeed sent her after the appellant. A court trial revealed, though, that her accusation was false and that the appellant induced her to make the false accusation. This led to the court discharging the respondents. 
the respondents immediately instituted an action against the appellants for malicious prosecution. The action was successful and he was awarded damages. The Supreme Court held that even though the police arrested and prosecuted the alleged offender, the person responsible for the action of the police was the fabricator of the false criminal complaints, and so he alone should bear the consequences of his illegality. Admissibility of evidence obtained in the course of the unlawful execution of a search warrant is illegally obtained evidence, that is, Evidence obtained in the course of an illegal execution of a search warrant admissible in evidence? Well, there are two positions of the law. The old position or old law. The new position or current law. Old position of the law. Any and all evidence is admissible provided that it is relevant with the exception of evidence obtained as a result of an involuntary confession. Kuruma v. R. a 1955 case, and Musa Saudau and another v. States, a 1968 case. New position of the law. According to Evidence Act 2011, the current position is that any and all evidence is admissible, including evidence obtained improperly, evidence obtained in contravention of a law, unless the court comes to the conclusion that reasons for excluding such evidence are greater and more significant than the reason for admitting such evidence. Section 14 and 15 evidence at 2011 then goes ahead to list matters or issues that the court should or should not be excluded.